everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to teach you all about the wet on wet technique. So let's do it! Okay, so I'm just going to go through all my materials. I have my Arches watercolor paper that I have taped down with painter's tape that I got at the dollar store. I have my Windsor Newton Cotman watercolors in my palette. I have my Princeton snap brush in a size 12 and I have my water and my paper towel. Okay, so the reason why I taped this down into four grids is because I'm gonna be showing you um, different techniques of how to use wet on wet. So I use wet on wet for a lot of my work. I use it in my florals, in my animals, um, but for this purpose, I'm gonna be showing you how to use them in backgrounds. And the reason why you tape it down, so if you were to do, say, a painting like this one, where you're gonna wet the whole background, when you do wet it, the paper will naturally warp. So the reason why you tape it down is so it doesn't do that. The reason why this is bent is because I took the tape off before it completely dried. Um, because I wanted to take the tape off in my last video because it's super satisfying and I didn't want to wait for it to dry. But that is why typically you stretch out the paper and you tape it down so it doesn't buckle like this. But other um, places that I use wet on wet, so I did this really cute bunny and what I did first was I did the first um, wash of the bunny in a really light wash. Um, I did the outline and then filled it in all these parts with water um, and a light gray and then I went back in with darker paint and I just tapped to get those really nice soft blends and bleeds like right here and that's using wet on wet. Another place I use it is in my florals so I painted my flower with a light wash which was this color and then I went back in with darker paint in the middle and then it had this again really nice soft blend out and the color bleeds, which are really nice. So that's where I use um, the wet on wet technique typically, but right now I'm gonna show you different techniques that you can use while doing backgrounds, like something like this. Okay, so the rule of thumb when doing um, the wet on wet technique is you're gonna wet the whole area, but you do not wanna over wet it where it's gonna pool. So you're gonna take your water, and you're gonna wet the area. Now, if you were to pick up and tilt this paper, you'd be able to see a nice light, uh, sorry, light shine on it. And that's how you know the whole thing is wet, okay? You do not wanna see drips like rolling around or pooling in one area. So just make sure you look at your paper and you kinda of have that nice shine over the whole bits and you don't see like little bits of pooled water. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is doing a dark to light gradient. So I'm gonna pick a color, I'm gonna pick my turquoise color, lots of paint, and I'm just going to run it at the top. Now, you know you're doing a proper wet on wet uh, technique when you see these kind of little veiny, this veiny effect coming out. Now, if you were to see the paint kind of running through, um, some water and it's pooling. That's not how you correctly do it. You know that you have too much water So you want to make sure you kind of see this like little veiny effect Happening and that's how you know you're doing it correctly, but you're just gonna drag the color down Until it gets lighter and lighter and You can keep dragging it down if you like but if you want it really light at the bottom, you're gonna wash off your brush Not completely and you're just gonna take that really light color and bring it up to meet the middle, okay? And if you want it more intense, you can get darker at the top again and continue to bring it down like that. Now, I don't want this dark color to come down anymore, so I'm just washing off my brush a bit and slightly bringing it up to meet so it blends nicely there, okay? And that's how you do a dark to light scale using wet on wet. Now, if you wanted to do two colors um, kind of running into each other, so one color at the top, one color at the bottom, and they meet and blend in the middle, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's pick, we'll do blue and pink. 
but you have to do the wet on wet first. So <laughs> let me wet my paper. Sorry, my brain doesn't work. Make sure your paint is clear. Mine is not. I would suggest using a different jar of water, but right now I don't have it. So I'm just showing you like this. I have developed bad habits with this, but typically the smart and responsible thing to do would be having two jars of water, one for clean, one for dirty water. But my son's napping and you never know when he's gonna wake up, so I don't have time for that right now. Okay, so my whole paper's wet. Make sure you get every piece too, so look, look to the side and make sure that it's wet all over because if you do have patches of dry bits, um, you're going to um, go over it and it will be kind of harsher lines if it's dry. Okay, so I'm going to start off up here again, seeing that veiny effect, and I'm just going to drag it down. Now, I want it to meet at the middle with a different color, so I'm not going to drag it down too much. I'm going to wash off my brush, get that lighter bit here, bring it up. Okay, then I can kind of drag it down to the middle. Like that. Now I'm going to get my other color. I'm going to use this permanent rose. I'm going to go at the bottom and do the same thing coming up to meet in the middle. Now, if you think you have too much pink or whatever color on your brush, again, wet it. Sorry, wash it and then continue to bring it close together. Then it will start blending, okay? Because if you bring the pink in too, too much, it will be really dark and you kinda wanna get that nice light tone that mixes in the middle. So I'm just gonna go darker over here again. Bring it into the middle, lightly. Now, if you really want it to be like a nice purple that's being mixed together, you can use more paint. So I'll, I'll show you, bring that pink right into the middle here. Get your blue out, my turquoise color, darker. I'm gonna wash it because there's a lot of blue on there. And I'm just gonna continue to drag that color down. Now wash it and you just, Put your clean brush where the two colors have met and you mix it there, moving it around. So you get that nice new color in the middle. Okay, so just wash your brush before you touch those two colors together. And there you go. So that's going from one color to the next. Now, another um, technique is a tapping technique. So I'm just gonna wet my background here. And I'll actually, so you can use this technique for a sky, clouds, sunset, especially if you're using colors that wouldn't mix together. So say if you're using um, um, like a orange and a blue sky or maybe purple and a pink sunset but then you have yellow so if you mix that purple and the yellow you could get a brown um so colors that don't really mix well together that complement each other that would kind of mix to like a muddy brown color for your sunset i'll show you so <clears throat> i'll start off with my lightest color so i'll, I'll kind of do like a sunset i'm just gonna like this but the tapping technique is kind of just taking your color and tapping it and so you get that veiny effect but when it dries it dries nice and um, blended it's a really nice soft blend so I'll take my purple I'll tap it up here I'll tap some over here now, when you use this tapping technique, you can tap it close to the yellow and they will just bleed together. They won't blend. If you keep going over the same spot with the purple on the yellow, then they will start to mix and turn a different color. 
but when you tap, it just bleeds into one another instead of mixing. So just make sure not to over tap. See, when you start to kind of do this, then they start to mix together. So you just want to make sure you tap. Tap, 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 and don't go over the same part too much. Again, it will start to mix. And again, try not to use too much water because then it will start to buckle and bleed. If you notice right here at the side, it's starting to pool a bit. I'm using a bit too much water. Um, if you find that's happening, you can always take your paper towel and just soak up some of that color so it doesn't end up pooling. <clears throat> Maybe I'll take my mauve color. Sorry, my hand's in the way. Just try not to add too much water is the trick. And it's definitely a skill to practice. Like there's plenty of times where I use too much water too and then I just have to mop it up with my, my paintbrush or my paper towel. Okay. So tapping is another technique you can use for skies and your sunsets, okay? And this works when you use colors, again, that are kind of opposite. So if you were to do, <clears throat> like I said, a blue and an orange, that typically if they mix, it will turn brown. You can tap next to each other and they'll bleed into one another rather than mixing. Okay, so I'll show you what this eventually looks like when it's dry, because you won't see, <clears throat> sorry, those veiny, bits it will dry in a nice soft blend now another mistake you might use um, which might happen if you were to go with a bunch of water on your brush and tap right there the water would expand and create kind of like a white a white area which you might not want if you do want it that's fine but I'll just I don't know if you can see this so if you were to tap there it kind of pushes the paint out and it might create a funky pattern. So if you notice something when it dries like that, that means there was too much water and it kind of just made that pattern. So I'm just gonna mop that back up, but I just want to show you that's something that sometimes happens too. Maybe that's where the sun is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so there's our sunset kind of sky. And the last thing I'm going to show you is doing another kind of sky like this, but having a sun in the middle. So for an example, kind of like this one, um, I had a yellow sun and then a purple sky. Again, like I said, if you were to mix the yellow and the purple, it would turn a bit brown. So there's a bit of a trick to doing this. Okay, so I'm going to use wet on wet, wet that whole background. And this technique works for colors, again, that don't mix if you were to do the same thing here. Okay, so we're gonna have a yellow-ish sun in the middle. I'm gonna kind of make my circle. I want it brighter in the middle, white, so I'm just using a really light wash. And I'm just gonna kind of move it around like this. And I'm gonna actually make it a little bit brighter. Okay, and then I'm gonna have a purple sky. So I'm gonna take my purple and I'm just gonna go around the edge. I'll just make this the ground. Okay, so I'm gonna start to bring the purple close to the yellow, but I'm not gonna touch the yellow. I kinda want a little bit of a white ring like that. So the yellow and the purple are not mixing. Okay, I'm gonna darken up the edges a bit to make it darker where the sun doesn't touch. Okay, I'm 
gonna darken up that yellow bit too. Okay, so you see a yellow circle, you see the purple, and now what you're gonna do to blend it together so it doesn't look like there's this white um, ring around it, you're gonna wash off your brush completely, and you're gonna kind of touch one part with the tip and one part with the body. Sorry. And you're just gonna go around like this. So it doesn't mix, I washed it off again. It doesn't mix, but they're gonna kind of bleed into each other. Just by getting close enough. Okay, and you use a clean brush without paint on it. So you're not actually using color to move them together. You're letting the white kind of do its thing, but make sure to dry off in between of washing your brush so you're not putting too much water on there. Okay, I'm just kind of moving it closer. But you want that really, really light bit there. I might even put a bit more yellow. Just bring it out. Wash off my brush. So it's a clean brush and you're just kind of touching the two. And they will kind of naturally bleed together. I hope this makes sense. But this is definitely something to practice as well. Okay. So just use a clean brush to get the two colors to kind of meet. But you still like, so it's not a, a prominent white circle around, but it is a lighter ring. I don't want to mess it up, but I'm going to show you what would happen if you were to mix the two. So we have our yellow here. I take our purple, and if I start mixing them and actually really touching them together, you're going to start to see that kind of lightish brown. You're going to start to get that color when really it would look better if it was white. Okay. And the more you touch it, the more you get that color. Okay. The more brown it will get. This actually doesn't look too bad, but <laughs> it could. Okay, so there you go. Now, <clears throat> those are different techniques that you can use for what on what. Remember, let it dry before you take up your tape or it will buckle. It is starting to buckle a bit. I didn't stretch it as much. Just like make sure it's completely smooth smooth before you tape it down. Um, and I did use a lot of water. Um, but also after it's dry, you can always put it on under some heavy books and leave it there for a couple days and it should um, flatten out as well. Okay, so just remember, try not to mix the opposite colors together. Um, use a clean brush when kind of starting to blend it and keep cleaning it. Um, and I'm just gonna show you what all this looks like when it's dry. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's dry. You can see you get some really nice soft blends um, with doing the wet on wet technique. Um, so stuff like this, you could always Take your color, your like black color, maybe do some trees. And remember you have to do it when it's dry or else it will blend into the background. So tip, make sure it's completely dry before painting on top. Do like a little beach scene maybe. You could do buildings, like a city landscape. I would typically use a smaller brush for this. <laughs> okay, so for the foreground, if you're using these as backgrounds, use um, a wet on dry technique, which is using your wet paint on this dry background. Okay, you could do that. You could do buildings or you could do something like this, how I did in one of my tutorials. 
But yeah, there are some common wet on wet techniques that you can do. And I'll just take off the tape just to show you those nice crisp lines. And there you go. Doing a dark to light wash, blending two colors together using the tapping technique. And then again, um, blending two colors together using a circle form. And there you go. There are different ways to do the wet on wet technique. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for more. Have a great day guys, bye.